by far and away the most important piece of what we do in the summer most important update that we put into our draft guide it's not the rankings it's not the articles it's not the the must draft or the all fade list or the tools it is the preseason write-ups that i do so after every single preseason weekend right we get the game of 16 slates or the slate of 16 games and i go game by game highlighting the most important takeaways from each of those games and i go in detail in these articles talking about the snaps and the routes run and the targets and stuff like that as it relates to the first team offense of that team. And, and you know, we're just trying to cut through the fucking noise. All right. We're like AirPods. You put them shits out. Let the rest of the world fade away because you're going to hear a lot of chatter throughout the preseason and the summer and the offseason, whatever. And then preseason is really where teams put their money where their mouth is. OK, a lot of you guys get nuts during the preseason and you say that I take this too seriously or some of y'all go way too in-depth on shit and you look at the wrong thing. So I want to be able to be your source to go to where I guide you through it and I tell you what's important and what's not important. And by far and away, easily, the most important thing when it comes to the preseason is not production. I don't care if you score two touchdowns. I don't care if you have 92 yards. I don't care about production. I want to see how much you are playing with the first team offense while the starting quarterback in particular is on the field and what happens in the packages that are important, the two-minute drill, the four-minute drill, on the goal line, all of those things matter. How many routes you're running out of the backfield when you're on the field with the starting quarterback? Because that is how the coaches envision the year going. They're not putting players out with the starting offense just for the fuck of it. They're saying, this is the offense we want to run during the season, so we have to tighten up the ship. You don't get it tighter than in the preseason games, okay? You don't get realistic gameplay in practices and in scrimmages, but you do in preseason. So this is wildly important. And week one, a lot of the times we only see like 10 or 12 snaps out of the starters, but it still gives you a glimpse into what we can be looking for, especially if you're drafting this early in the season. So a lot of my videos going forward are going to be less like clickbaity. I mean, they're still going to be clickbaity as shit, but less like random players that were just thrown around and more following the storyline of what happens in preseason games, right? This The next month will basically, it's going to be a fucking movie out here. It's going to be a story of the preseason games, what we can take away as a whole and trying to line everything up with what we've heard up to this point in the summer and what we will see on the field up until your drafts at the end of August and early September. So I know it's kind of weird that I'm just doing this in the middle of the preseason games, but I got up, I was fucking pumped up about it, and we got right to uh, diving into Thursday night's games and Friday night's games, and I want to give y'all my biggest takeaways thus far. So that being said, y'all know we got to tuck it in. Flex your traps. Stop yelling. <laughs> So as I mentioned, our draft guide is live. It will be updated daily, weekly, whatever, until your drafts actually happen in early September. You can go to bdge.co to cop it, but the easiest and the least expensive way for you to do so is go to prizepicks.com or download the app. Link will be in the description. If you're a first-time depositor and you use the promo code BDGE, 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 when you deposit $10, that's it. All you got to throw down is $10, but you could do more because we're going to be rolling out a lot of preseason bets on prize picks. All right, so roll, roll with us. Us. We're going to make some money throughout the preseason. We're going to do it in the regular season as well, but you get the draft guide absolutely free. You'll get an email from them and from us after you deposit with access and instructions and all that shit. So BDGE on prize picks on the app, get you some bread, get you some revenue, get you some preseason action. Let's get into it. Also, yes, we will be doing a giveaway for a signed Jonathan Taylor helmet in this video. So make sure you stay tuned. I don't know when I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it to you. Thanks to pristine auction. We will be giving that bad boy away. Now, I'm not going to go into every single game and every single player and all that shit. That will be in the actual write-ups in the draft, guys. So just go fucking cop that and make your life a lot easier. But some of the biggest takeaways here. Saquon looked amazing. He was running a ton of routes, got a ton of carries. They only played one drive with the starters. I talked about this in yesterday's video, but it was great to see Saquon back there. I moved him all the way up to my RB7. You know, they talked all offseason about getting him open in space was really important they did so and i think that will continue to be the focus of their offense this year and i'm really fucking excited for a little bounce bike from saquon uh Traylon burks man it continues to be a rocky offseason for him and leviton put it you know really well this is a guy that i've been fading all offseason i've gotten a lot of pushback from that because you guys like to compare it to like jamar chase of last year i think the signs for Traylon burks and the negativity out of camp were way more clear and way more defined when it comes to burks but leviton said obviously 
still very early, but more bad signs for Burks. Titans rested all their starters, Robert Woods and Nick Westbrook Akini. Like, I mean, listen, if Nick Westbrook Akini is getting the fucking starter rest treatment and you're not, might need to look at some things. Uh, entered the game after Des Fitzpatrick, Racy McMath. That's a fucking fake name if I've ever seen one. And Kyle Phillips earned just one target on 30 snaps. So again, like Burks is not a guy I want to draft anywhere near his ADP right now. And I think Burks can have a pretty good second half of the year, but this happens with a lot of rookies. I'm not against drafting rookies at any position, but the earlier rookies go in drafts, the more the more risky they are. Because more often than not, rookies take a while to assimilate. Most of them make their impacts week eight and on. Most of them make their week their impacts week 10 and beyond that. And Burks seems to be going down that path. So yes, maybe he'll have a breakout week 10 to 16, but you know, he started the summer as like a sixth round pick. Then he moved back to seventh and eighth and ninth. And again, the earlier you, you draft them, the more opportunity costs you're losing out on when it comes to the players you could be getting at that time. So Burks right now does not seem like he's getting significant play time anytime soon. I think it's probably important to go over some injuries that were picked up last night. So over in Atlanta, Drake London looked really good before getting hurt. It's a knee injury, but it, it seems like it's not going to be significant. So I think he'll be fine for week one. Between London and Pitts, again, I don't really want to invest in the Atlanta Falcons passing offense whatsoever, but these are guys that can probably combine for like a 48% target share. So listen, I'm not going to target them and attack them in drafts. If they fall around behind ADP, I will be okay getting London. I will be okay. I'm more open to the um, idea of getting Kyle Pitts because he's at a, a much more important position in your lineup, um, but I'm not going out of my way. I also would just completely fade the Atlanta Falcons backfield at this point, man. I, I know there's a lot of hype, but it's unwarranted for a guy like Tyler Algier right now. He was like the fourth running back in there with the starters. The starters split their snaps evenly between between Kadri uh, Allison and Damian Williams. They both got six snaps. It's going to be a really, really bad running back by committee. Correll barely played any running back there, so any upside that he had last year from being at that position will not be there for you this year. It's a bad offensive line. Just uh, completely ignore that backfield altogether. We do have some takeaways from the Detroit Lions side of the ball, though. I'm on Ross St. Brown. I think this might just be a guy that I've been... I haven't been like... He hasn't been a fade for me, but I think I've probably been too low on him. He might be someone I just need to target. I, th I think there's a real chance we just see him be the Robert Woods of Jared Goff's offense for the next, you know, two, three years. You know, he was out there for all the snaps of Jared Goff. He only ran four routes, got targeted on two of them. Obviously, Jamison Williams wasn't out there. TJ Hawkinson also wasn't out there, but... I'm on Ross St. Brown. Looks like he was just picking off exactly where he left last year. So he's a guy that I'm going to be a little bit higher on. I'm probably going to move him up my rankings uh, after the first preseason game. Just listen, I know there's there's going to be you watch the game. And you're like, oh, I'm going to move him up my rankings. It's kind of where I'm at with some guys. I like to put a little bit of logic behind it. But sometimes you just see it and you're like, I feel dumb right now for not having him higher. I'm on Ross St. Brown. Seems like that guy for me. When it comes to DeAndre Swift, here's a couple interesting takeaways. All right. They played 10 snaps with the starting team. Jared Goff was out there for 10 snaps. There's good and bad news. I'll give you the bad news first as you should always do in life. Swift got six of those snaps. Jamal Williams got four of those snaps. So we're seeing a little bit of a 60-40 split. I think it'll be closer to 65 in favor of Swift when the real season comes along. But this was a committee last year with Swift and Jamal Williams, and I don't really see a case where it's not going to be that way. However, Swift is going to get basically every valuable touch out of this backfield. He played on six snaps. He got five opportunities, four carries and a target. That's what you love to see. He ripped off an electric touchdown run. Swift is going to get the targets. He's going to get the uh, the rushing touchdowns most likely in this offense. It's going to be a much better offense, a great offensive line. So despite giving away 40% of the snaps on the first team, I think Swift warrants every bit of that RB1 ADP that he has right now. Jacksonville and Cleveland was interesting. Uh, Deshaun Watson played, so uh, there's that. But none of the other starters did. David Njoku did play nine of nine snaps with Deshaun Watson. So the opportunity will be there regardless of who's at quarterback for Njoku, no matter who's under quarterback. So I'm, I'm kind of still in on him as a breakout guy. I just don't know how great the passing offense is going to be for Jacksonville, though. Trevor Lawrence was on the field for a minute. So we have a decent amount of takeaways here, okay? Uh, he was on the field for 25 snaps. Christian Kirk did not play and James Robinson did not play. Kirk will, will be there one. We don't know what James Robinson is going to be. At this point, he's still recovering from the Achilles, so I, I'd be surprised if we saw him at all during the preseason. But from a wide receiver standpoint, Zay Jones is a guy I think we need to have our eye on that I admittedly have not been looking at, have not been high on enough. He had a breakout last year with the Raiders, and it earned him a three-year, $24 million bag with the Jags this offseason. He was in on all 25 snaps with Trevor Lawrence. So I think he's going to be a full-time starter. Marvin Jones was also in for all 25 snaps. However, Zay Jones saw four targets. Marvin Jones didn't see a single one. I think Zay Jones, I mean, he's got a lot of hype this camp, and I kind of just like shrugged it off. I'm like, they got Kirk, they got Marvin Jones, they got ETN, they got Ingram. And I was kind of like, he's just like falling by the wayside. I'm not 
really going to go out of my way to draft Zay Jones, but he's someone in later round best ball drafts. I think he's going to be a full-time player this year sooner rather than later. And maybe the breakout last year was not too fluky and he could be an 800 and 900 yard uh, receiver in this offense. Big takeaway, of course, is Travis Etienne looked fucking phenomenal. Played the first 20 snaps with Trevor Lawrence and he got nine carries. He ran 11 routes, extremely fucking involved. And the big takeaway here for me is this, that like when James Robinson comes back, we don't know what this split is going to be. But I get nervous with dudes like Travis Etienne because coaching staffs tend to look at a guy like him and be like, he's a weapon, right? We're going to use him as a split backfield guy, no matter what the other situation is. Like I was worried that Snoop Connor might have gotten 10 of the 25 snaps. That didn't happen. Etienne saw 22 of the 25 Trevor Lawrence snaps. He was just a breather back. So it tells me that Jacksonville looks at him as a guy who can handle the workload as a guy who's not automatically pigeonholed into a split backfield because of his uh, receiving ability, okay? So I thought this was a huge positive for ETN. He looked very good on the touches. He was getting targeted a lot. He was running a lot of different routes. So fucking stonks up for, for ETN in my humble ass opinion. None of the starters played in Cincinnati versus Arizona. As for Zach Wilson, he is looking at a bone bruise plus a partially torn meniscus, which needs two to four weeks-ish to recover. So he should be good for the start of the season. Uh, some really, really ratchet reporting out of what happened with Zach Wilson. Uh, so that was a fun morning on Twitter. As for the skill players, there are some takeaways here. And one of them was that Zach Wilson played on nine snaps. Michael Carter saw seven of those nine snaps. Brees Hall saw, saw two. Okay, so this was, um, I, I'm not going to go, you know, out of control here. And this is one of those where you guys will comment and be like, it's the first preseason week. It fucking matters, guys. This was exactly what I was talking about. I made a video earlier this week where I was fading Brees Hall because Michael Carter is going to be uncomfortably involved in this offense. And this is going to be a committee for the beginning part of the year. And again, I'm not fading anyone because just that statement, but the earlier you have to draft a guy, it's the same sentiment I've had for Kenneth Walker for so long, but now Kenneth Walker is like a 10th round pick, not a terrible value anymore. Brees Hall going at the end of the third, early fourth round, when I feel like it's pretty clear Michael Carter is going to play a role in this offense, that's risky as shit. That's a guy who you're banking on has to have that breakout last six weeks of the season, or he's not returning any sort of value where you're drafting him. And the snaps are kind of telling you how they're going to start the season. Garrett Wilson also only played a single snap with the starters behind Elijah Moore, who played all nine of nine. And if the Zach Wilson injury makes his ADP dip at all, I'm all in on fucking Elijah. I've already been, but we're, we're even more in on more. Okay, get more in on more. That's all I could say. Um, but he was behind Corey Davis, Braxton Barrios. I don't expect that to be, you know, a, a real thing for the entirety of the season, but it's worth mentioning. Uh, Philly's offense was fucking lit, man. Jalen Hurts looked amazing. I've moved him up to my quarterback four, six for six, 80 yards and a touchdown. He had a 12 yard rushing touchdown called back. Dallas Goddard looked awesome. I'm going to move him up a little bit in my rankings too. I think we're underrating him. Devontae Smith didn't play. Kenneth Gainwell and Boston Scott didn't play. So we didn't really get to see the rotation at running back. Um, so nothing else to take away there other than Jalen Hurts is going to be fucking awesome. So is Dallas Goddard. Green Bay, San Francisco. Romeo Dubs keeps doing his fucking... How do you even say his name? Romeo Dubs keeps taking dubs, I guess we could say. Uh, the starters didn't play. Aaron Rodgers didn't play. Lazard didn't play. Cobb didn't play. Chris Watson didn't play. Bobby Tunyon didn't play. Did anybody fucking play? This guy did. He ran 15 routes and saw seven targets with Jordan Love. So all of that hype all offseason, it's good to see it translate onto the field. He had a nice long touchdown. So I think he's someone that, again, I, I use where there's smoke, there's fire. You can use that in a positive way. And there has been uh, about as much smoke towards Mr. Romeo as any player in the NFL up to this point. Um... So yeah, I will. Uh, I'll draft him in best ball. I will move him up my rankings a little bit, and I could definitely see a world where he takes over as like a clear wide receiver two in this offense. If not, you know, splitting the one A one B with a guy like Lazard or whoever the fuck they consider it to be at this point, because Christian Watson is still out with a preseason uh, knee injury, and uh, and it's not pretty over there for the wide receiver core. But Romeo Dubs played really, really. Is it Dubs? Is it Dubs? I think it's Dubs. Fuck. Whatever. Fuck you guys. San Francisco. Uh, Trey Lance looked awesome. Most of his weapons were sitting out. Elijah Mitchell's dealing with this hamstring strain, which I think could be could be a thing, man. It could be a little bit of a problem, but he's expected to be good for the regular season. He's going to miss most of the preseason. Jeff Wilson didn't play, but Trey Sermon played ahead of Tyrion Davis Price, and Trey Sermon played every single snap with Trey Lance. So we got Trigger Trey and Trigger Trey. It's a fucking deadly combo. It's Mike Vick and Michael Turner. I know they didn't fucking play together, but if they did, this is what the modern day would look like. Uh, Trey Lance nailed Danny Gray, absolute speedster for a fucking Hail Mary touchdown. That's the kind of stuff that Trey Lance brings to the field. The big arm, explosive plays that Jimmy G did not have, plus, of course, the rushing upside. So Trey Lance was already on our must draft list in our draft guide, um, and he will stay there. And I've actually moved him up a little bit in our quarterback rankings, which are also in the draft guide. That's the only place to 
get them. So uh, that's the biggest wrap ups here. We have some guys moving up, some guys moving down. For the most part, I feel like we've kind of led you guys pretty fucking well. Based on everything that's happened in week one of preseason up to this point, we were pretty spot on with a lot of the players that we were fading or, or or targeting or whatever, but a lot of things will change over the next couple of weeks. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel, obviously, to uh, stay in the know with all this preseason stuff. And we will be writing up all of Saturday's games as they happen, probably be live tomorrow morning or Monday, whatever. Um, again, the easiest way to get access is by going to prizepicks.com. Let's take some, uh, let's take some prize picks plays for tonight. Uh, the move for most preseason games is just taking the unders on these players. A lot of the running backs are set too high. Uh, I'm going to take the under on Isaiah Spiller. 22 and a half rush yards against the Rams. Yep, we're going to hit the under. So ride along with us. Use promo code BDG and you'll be able to uh, get hit with a 100% deposit match on whatever you put down on prize picks. Let's do this giveaway. So this is um this is courtesy of Pristine Auction. Now, if you guys are new to Pristine Auction, they have, I mean, they're just like an aw awesome auction website where you can find sports, members, uh, sports memorabilia, whether it's signed jerseys or signed helmets or signed bats if you're into baseball. They've got like, auctions ending literally all the time you can find any of your favorite players which is super super cool i'm really actually sad that we have to fucking give this thing away because this is beautiful and it suits our office really 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 well and it's jonathan taylor 101 no matter what but they gave it to us to give to y'all so i will be a man of my word unfortunately and basically what you have to do is just go to pristineauction.com and when you sign up and use our code bdge you don't even have to deposit but when you use our code bdge to sign up they're going to give you a free five dollars onto your account um that's really all you got to do as long as you go to their website and you sign up with or without a deposit and you use our promo code you are entered into the giveaway we're going to give this thing away probably at the end of next week depending on how many entries we get into it that's it it is absolutely free to get into the entry you just got to sign up using our code uh if you're a first time signer upper all right code bdge get you entered into this we'll give it away next week um and that's all I got for you today. So I'm excited to, to get a little bit more into the nitty gritty because we've been talking about a lot of the same dudes over and over and over again. And there's no new information that comes out, you know, for the last month or so. A little bit of training camp stuff. But now we got the preseason numbers to actually work off of. Uh, if you have any questions or if you just want to fucking yell at me about the preseason stuff, I'd love to flex some fucking traps at you in the comments. All right. I will. Uh, I will see y'all tomorrow. We've got a new style of video coming out tomorrow. And I'm excited to see what you guys think about it.